You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. This week, Cinephiles Celebrate as the 23rd Gimli International Film Festival presents a full five-day schedule with over 90 films offered as part of the organization's mission to inspire, educate, and empower audiences while celebrating the art of film and the film community here in Manitoba. To hear more, I'm joined by Executive Director of the Gimli International Film Festival, Alan Wong. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Alan. Um, we've connected uh, remotely. You're set up in the, the picturesque town of, of Gimli on the shores of, of Lake Winnipeg. C- can you feel a, a buzz in the town, Alan? I sure can. I mean, it's it's not just a, it's not just the fish flies. It's actually there's a, a palpable energy and people are, you know, it's been a great summer so far. Um, and people are just raring to go for this festival. It's funny, like the days leading up to it, you know, we get a banner gets put up on on the street over the over the center street of Gimli. And then the scaffolding goes up in the waters uh, off of the beach for the beach screenings. And it feels like once that kind of starts rolling, then people start going, like, oh, it's coming. <laughs> it is coming indeed. Uh, what, what about you? I mean, you're still relatively new to the role of executive director appointed in 2021. This this really your first full swing of putting the Gimli International Film Festival together without the, the restrictions and regulations and, and hesitancies of, of, of years past, right? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, I took over in the pandemic this role. And, uh, and so dealing with all of that, I felt like maybe was a bit of a a bit of a not I wouldn't say a nice way of coming into it but it definitely did sort of help me to sort of ease into it because you know throughout the pandemic we weren't we didn't do any in-person events well we did we did one we did a drive-in a pop-up drive-in and so that kind of gave me a taste of what it was like and then also uh, a chance to get associated with all the back end of the of running the festival and the box office and that sort of thing and then last year our festival was sort of a smaller festival it was still five days Still had lots of tons of films and that sort of thing, but things were just spaced out a little bit more. Um, there weren't quite as quite as many special events and 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 events where people you know gathered and that sort of thing. And so, but this year, it's a whole other ball game. So uh, you, you really teed it up there. Um, let's talk about uh, GIF and and it's GIF, right? It's not GIF, not to open an internet debate, but uh, the, the, <laughs> the Gimli International Film Festival. Yeah, because uh, it's not the, Gimli. <laughs> exactly. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, anyway, uh, so tell us about GIF this year. Uh, I would imagine, as always, a mix of short and feature film presentations, right? Yeah, that's right. We've got, well, if you if you count the beach screenings, we've got over 35 feature films. And wow. then between, I think it's around 60 to 70 um, short films as well. And we do this, and this is the way it happens every year. There's just tons of programming. Um, but uh, in, in addition to that, to the amazing movies that we show, uh, we've got 12 industry sessions programmed throughout spread out throughout the um, the festival. And this is for anyone interested in the craft and the business of filmmaking. Um, and they'll think it'll be really interesting for people. Um, you mentioned that special programming, um, a whole variety, including the Winnipeg Indigenous Filmmaking Collective screening, um, the outreach uh, programming, MB Shorts and competition, the RBC $10,000 pitch competition, and, and so much more. Can, can you talk more about the importance of, of those types of initiatives for, for up and coming and, and, and established filmmakers? For sure. I mean, like, you know, uh, emerging filmmakers need uh, um, as much support as possible because, you know, you know, people, when you're learning, when you're emerging, you're not really doing it for the money, for commercial reasons, right, obviously, and and a lot of the short films, uh, like these films probably will, you want them to be seen as uh, by as many people as possible. Um, At the same time, you know, there is sort of a process of, of, not only like um, um, showing our audiences the best films that we can find, but also uh, a process of supporting that filmmaker and supporting them in their development, right? And so a lot of our special programming is meant for that. Um, it's not only does it support the filmmaker and the communities that the arts communities that make the films, um, but it also kind of there's some a lot of really creative uh, filmmakers out there, especially if you have you know uh, limited resources, you only have a certain amount of time to spend uh, uh, telling a story. Um, this the films can get really creative, which is interesting to see, you know. And uh, it's very different from you know say like a big commercial film where you know you 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 
you know, it's pretty, the story is pretty formulaic or, you know, you have to you do it in a certain way that everyone's kind of used to. Um, they can really take a license with being creative. And, uh, uh, and that's where you're actually going to see a lot of um, the more artistic side of filmmaking come out. Uh, of course, uh, this year's Gimli International Film Festival um, takes place uh, with all that is going on in the States right now in terms of uh, the writer's strike and, and the actor's strike. And I know that there are a number of question marks on, on, on in terms of later festivals um, in, in Venice, for instance, or at the Toronto International Film Festival, uh, the largest in North America, which typically has a whole bunch of stars that show up, right? I mean, they, they make the most of the time in Toronto. It, it really is something else. Are you expecting any A-listers in, in, in Gimli this year or uh, any special guests, Alan? Uh, well, we have we definitely have our special guests. Uh, uh, as far as like American sort of Hollywood A listers, um, pr no promises of anything. Uh, if anything does uh, appear, they'll probably be appearing on screen uh, uh, over anything else. Um, and that's kind of usually the way it is with um, uh, our film festival. We really try to highlight sort of like local Canadian talent, but also like stuff from international markets that yeah. you wouldn't normally get to see like amazing amazing films from from iceland from the ukraine from all over the world just uh stuff that you won't, won't find on any of the streaming platforms and in theaters and so this is one of the defining features of our festival we really try to showcase that and then also support the local manitoban films um and these are typically all of the films uh in the festival proper separate from the beach films are sort of like independent uh, films, you know, not necessarily backed by a huge studio or anything like that. But then the beach films, you know, we've traditionally shown a lot of more Hollywood classics and that sort of thing, but we're kind of merging that a little bit now. We've got, uh, not only do we have the Hollywood, big Hollywood classics like Top Gun um, and The Great Showman, but we've also, we're also featuring some movies that have sort of made it into the mainstream, but have a manageable connection like mm. Champions, uh, which was filmed primarily here, starring Woody Harrelson. Uh, and then the Buffy Sam Reed documentary that was made, actually directed by uh, one of our alumni uh, filmmakers, uh, Madison Thomas. Uh, and as you, you know, you can, it is available, uh, you know, out there uh, if you want to see it. But, uh, you know, we think showing it on the beach in Gimli, where sort of Madison um, uh, spent a lot of, uh, got her start really. Like we showed a lot of her early short films and her feature film, and she won an award um, for her first feature here. And so it's kind of fitting that we're um, showing this on the beach because we think it'll be, you know, very popular, very accessible for people. People love to see musical documentaries, especially on a beach in. On, in that setting, uh, but then also with uh, with Madison's connection to Gimli, I think it's a perfect combination. And now you've talked a lot about this. Uh, of course, one of the highlights of the festival every year are those sunset screenings. Um, if, if people haven't been before, can you describe what that's like and what they're going to see? Um, you know, it it kind of it's you can compare it to what it was like going to the drive-in you know mm -hmm. as a kid um except minus the cars and add the beach and <laughs> add the sound of the water it's pretty beautiful i mean like you know the screen is in the water and so you're sitting on the beach under the stars you know it's a be you know usually it's a beautiful night uh fingers crossed it'll be the weather will will cooperate with us um it usually does and uh you know hundreds of people just come out and and pick a spot on the beach or, or bring their beach chairs um, and uh, enjoy these movies. Uh, it's kind of a, become a, a very unique Manitoba summer tradition for a lot of people. Uh, now, one last question for you. Uh, what about tickets, festival passes, day passes, both available, right? Yep. Uh, actually, no, day passes. We don't have day passes, but we, you know, the people who come for the day can obviously buy, purchase single tickets uh, for whatever they want to see. Uh, but we do have a, a variety of passes available for people uh, who are coming for multiple days and uh, who are doing, you know, multiple screenings. Fantastic. Uh, of course, details up at Gimli Film. Uh, we've also got details up at Classic107.com. Alan, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much, Simon. Take care.